Welcome back to The Code Circus. Today we are going to talk about sending information back from the functions that we have created or that are created by other parts of Python and how to receive that information. The structure is actually pretty simple, but there are a couple things that we have to pay attention to. So let's take a look. Let's dive right in and look at some code. Again, we're going to use the DEF command to define our function. We're going to put in a name. It could be my function. I want to get anybody confused. You can call this anything you want. Um, happy days. You know, just let you know we can do anything. Here is our parameter. And then we have a new command here called return. Return will send back one value to our calling function. So I should rename all of these, otherwise we're going to have a problem. Happy days. <coughs> there we go. Awesome. So it's going to multiply whatever value we send to it by five. And as long as it can accept that multiplication, which all these can, then we're going to get it to print out the value that is returned by that happy days function. So let's take a look and see what we got here. You can see three times five is 20. Five times four is 20. And then we do happy, 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 happy. So that prints out five times as well. So using this function, again, it becomes very versatile because of the type um, is variable. And we can send uh, strings or we can send numbers to this. It doesn't have a problem as long as we can do that operation on the, that content. The thing you have to be careful of is when you start using things like conditionals. So if, for example, if I say if x is greater than zero return five now let's see what happens when we run this we get an error oh do i have something else wrong if x greater than zero, greater than ah greater than is not supported between instances of string and int but let me just take out the happy let's just put in zero and see how that works because that's one problem first off but here's the real problem um when we put in a value that is in a conditional and we don't handle the return we get back a value of none so python is telling us that sorry uh the result did not get calculated, so we're going to return nothing. And that's OK in a lot of cases, but sometimes you want to process the values being returned. And a value of none gets processed very differently than a number. So it is good coding skill to create a return for every circumstance. So here, when x is greater than 0, we're going to return 5 times x. For any value where x is less than or equal to 0, we're just going to return negative 1. So when we clear this, and now we get a negative 1 for that last value. And in fact, yeah, I don't think we can do the string comparison. I don't think that'll still work. But the other thing we can do here, and this is kind of fancy, is just put a return outside the if statement. Now, that tells us something about the way returns work. As soon as the function hits the return command, it exits the processing of the function. So if x is greater than 0, it's going to return 5 times x. But if x is less than or equal to 0, it will not do a return statement. It's going to skip down. In fact, let's put a print statement here just so we can do, see this. Print not returned above. So it's going to run this statement. Then it's going to return negative 1. So we can actually get away with not using the 
else statement. And the reason why I tell you this is not so you have to do it this way, but a lot of times you'll see code written in this way. So you need to think about what is actually going on. The processing of the function stops right here if x is greater than zero. It jumps out of that function. It never gets to these two statements. If x is less than or equal to zero, it doesn't get to this statement, and it gets to these two statements in turn, one after the other. And in fact, if I put another return after this, it's never going to get to that return statement because I've already um, returned the negative one. It will never do anything below that return of negative one. So that's important to understand about your return statements. The other thing I want to look at in here is kind of interesting. It's called a pass statement. And we've seen this before when we talked about um, conditionals. But I think it has more use here. Suppose you're writing a program and you know you're going to want some functions in that program. But you don't quite know exactly what you want them to do yet, and you're just not ready to write them. But you want to be able to call them within the function. Maybe it's some kind of event or something like that. By using the pass operator, we can tell Python that we're really kind of holding the space here. We're going to come back later and fill this in. And it really just avoids getting an error. So if I just run this, It runs fine. It's not going to do anything, but it's going to run fine. If I take out the word pass and try to run it, I'm going to get an error because the function technically is not defined. It's not completely defined. So I have to put that password in there if I don't want to put anything in there and I just want to use it as a placeholder. So this is a, an important way of helping you design your code. You might find later on there's reasons why we want to put those in there in order to... Um, What's, this is called method, a method decomposition or a function decomposition where you break down your thoughts into smaller parts. Let's say, for example, you wanted to calculate the quadratic formula. And you knew that in order to calculate the quadratic formula, there's certain things you had to do. So you listed out those steps, and it might be um, calculate the discriminant first, right? And you might know that you have to send uh, the discriminant um, A, B, and C. And then you might say, OK, once I've calculated that, I need to calculate um, whether it's a negative or a positive to determine um, whether it's an imaginary number. So calculate imaginary, let's say, for example. And then we know we might have a return that we get back from that. So we're just going to do calculate, send it the discriminant. So, and then do a pass with that. So we can start basically writing our larger picture design of our um, function, right? in order to get a good idea of how it might work. And it's not actually going to uh, do anything. It, it's just going to stop. Um, I might actually have to send numbers to make that work. But we'll just take that out for now. Um, it's not going to do anything. It's just going to stop and kind of create a placeholder for us in order to uh, give us a place to think through our code. Now, we could write it out on paper. but this kind of gives us a way of physically in the code writing out a structure that we know we have to go back later on and fill in. So it's, it's a useful way of learning how to code. There's one other thing in here that I kind of, this is where we would normally talk about it, but it's really been a, a more advanced topic. So we're going to leave it off. But if you hear somebody talk about recursion, that's when a function calls itself. And this is kind of tricky to deal with. So we're going to leave this maybe at the very, very end of the course if we have space. We'll come back and we'll talk about recursion because it does have some neat um, uses in coding and solving some puzzles. But anything you can do in recursion, you can always solve with a regular loop solution. So we don't, you're not going to get stuck into something that you can't solve uh, and you need recursion that you have to use. 
So that is all for today. I will see you next time.